Parents in England should not take their children out of school in term time and will face consequences if they do. This is what the new Education Secretary, Bridget Phillipson, has told the BBC. Some families say they would rather accept the fines than pay thousands of pounds extra for holidays. So, let's take you through some of the rules. Repeated failure to ensure school attendance can result in a court prosecution fine of up to £2,500, a community order even a jail sentence of up to three months. The minimum fines for removing children without permission for five school days will rise from £60 per child to £80 per child from next month. Our reporter, Dan O'Donoghue, has been talking to Laura Melling. Now, Laura saved £3,000 by taking her daughters on holiday during term time. It was £60 per parent per child, so it was £120 each child. Um, me and my husband both got a letter each, um, and it said that if we didn't pay it within 60 days, it'd be an offence against our names. We're joined now by head teacher Craig Burgess. Um, good morning to good you. Morning. And Rachel Smith, who has taken her children out for school holidays as well. Rachel, morning to you as well. Good morning. Um, Craig, you're a head teacher at Wollstone Community Primary School. Um, how big a problem is this? Because when I, when you hear um, Laura there, and she saved what three thousand pounds, a sixty pound fine, or even if it's going up to eighty pounds, is just not is just not going to be a deterrent. Okay, the local authority I'm in don't fine because we don't ag agree that it actually works, and we work with families. So uh, the attendance of my school is above national average. And we, we, we work with families to educate and say what the impact will be on their children not being in school. So rather than fining and coming into that conflict with families, where our local authority does not fine at all. We don't believe there's evidence for it. I don't think there are many parents who don't understand that children being in school get educated. So that's not <laughs> the problem, is it, really? You know, not, not to be, you know, too picky, but that's not the, the issue. The issue is families want family time. They want to educate their children by showing them other parts of the country, of the world, if they're fortunate enough to be able to travel abroad. And when they try to travel during summer holidays, particularly, the costs are extortionate for some families. Absolutely agree. And I think schools need to look... Uh, for example, you just asked me when we break up. We don't break up until next week. Uh, we have... Uh, we break up this term through the year and we have extra holidays through the year rather than a really long August holiday, which gives our families more opportunities to take holidays outside peak times. So when schools do that and, and work with families and allow that, it becomes less of a problem in schools that are working with their communities. And are all schools allowed to do that? Yes. So the, the schools have the flexibility to extend holidays at other parts of the year and shorten the Absolutely. summer holiday? Absolutely. So our summer holiday is literally four weeks, and then we have two weeks in the autumn term, two weeks at the, in the wit, which is the end of May and start of June, and that allows families to get a cheaper holiday. And I think the, the other issue here is, yes, it's about saving money, but actually you have to look about outcomes for children and impact on their education long term at any level of education. So a primary school child missing a week of school when they're learning about multiplication when they come to do that again, let's say after Christmas, that child walks in and has got no idea what's going on. Craig, can I ask, can I ask you a question, which is uh, the reason we're doing this story today, it's an important story, yep. is not least because we have a new education secretary, Bridget Phillipson. Now, from what you first said to us, which is, you don't do this, you do not fine, she has said, they'll be fined more. Yep. So you are directly at odds with the new Education Secretary, what would you say to her about her first interview with us about how she plans to deal with the problem she sees very clearly in schools? And I think there's a difference between long to absence, one-off absences, and p people that are, like, 90% absence for a child. So the issue when a family takes a child on holiday during term time is also is when they suddenly have become ill for a week and then their attendance drops through the floor. So that's where it becomes an issue, or families that are down to 85, 80 or even less... Attendance. No, I understand that, but you, you are obviously, and if you, I don't doubt your abilities as a head teacher at the school you run, but you're completely at odds with your own education secretary over yep. this issue. Which is interesting, considering it's a new government, yes. Well, uh, you say interesting, explain that. What is it? Well, you would mean? think that the government would take a slightly more proactive approach and engage with families rather than penalising families. And I believe by engaging with families, you get a better outcomes. And I think it's about educating. We don't just educate children, sometimes we have to educate our 
parents and talk to our parents and explain why this has an impact on their children. And it's about respect for families as well. Uh, Rachel, do you want to pick up on some of this for us? Welcome to the programme, by the way. Can you tell us, Thank you know, you. Uh, uh, when you've done this and how much money do you think you've saved? I think collectively I've saved over £10,000 now because I've recently been abroad again to Turkey this year and taken the kids out of school once again to go on holiday. I don't do it recklessly. I think, yeah, there is a good argument. Yeah, you've got to think about the kids' education. I do totally agree. But I always take them out after all the SATs or exams, whatever they're doing in their school year. I don't do it beforehand. So throughout the school year, September through to May, they are in school, they're learning, they take part in their SATs, they don't miss anything important in the school year. We then go afterwards. It's like a reward for the children. It's quality time for us. And I do think it's really important. I don't agree with the prices in the school holidays. Rachel, what does the school where your children go to school, what does the school say? Um, they're probably not best impressed, but at the same time, like I say, I don't do it recklessly. I make sure that the children's education isn't affected. Both kids are doing very well in school, so I have no concerns with their education at this point. Do they fine you? So have you paid fines? Yeah, so I get fined nearly every year for a holiday. I've been, like I say, away recently. Haven't received a fine yet, but I'm fully expecting one. So when you hear the Education Secretary say um, you will face consequences, do you care? I mean, does it matter? Because you're breaking the rules anyway and, you, you know, you've given us your justification, but you're breaking the rules anyway. Does, does what Bridget Phillipson says make a difference? I understand why they're saying it, but I think they also need to look at things outside of the box. Like, it's not all about making money. It's about quality family time. Like, some children have working parents, they don't spend a lot of time with their parents. I think quality time away is really important. I think that should be taken into account rather than, oh, you're going to get fined X, Y and Z because you're doing something that we don't agree with. I don't think they're looking at it from a parent and child's perspective as well. Yeah, Rachel, can I just ask, so uh, a lot of people have sympathy with the, the notion that, you know, holidays are too expensive during uh, school holiday time. You know, the prices go up, people are well aware of that. But for, for you as an individual, how high would the fine have to be before it really made you sit down before you made the booking and go... I mean, are we talking... I think the fine has gone 60, up to 80. It's going up to 80. Up to so, I mean, if it were a £200 fine, would that make you and your family think again? If it were a £500 fine, what, what is... Is there a marker that genuinely would make a difference? I think, to be honest, if the, if the fine is going to be less then what I'm going to pay to go in the summer holidays, I'm always going to choose a fine. So there isn't really a cap on it. If the holiday is going to be £3,000 more to go in summer holidays, as long as my fine's less than that, it's still cheaper for me to go away in term time. This is the thing, Greg, Greg isn't it? That um, It's an economic argument. It comes, to, it comes down to economics because what Rachel says is she wants to spend quality time with her children. People work and this is an important time and they need to be able to afford to do that. And that is as important for children to be relaxed and secure and safe in their families in order to be educated well, to be comfortable to be educated well. And I think the argument here goes to what is the value of our education and how much do we value education? I was brought up by a single parent who had four children and that my parents said, go to school, you've got a free education and, and you'll have better outcomes in life. And I think it's that element of education is a privilege to have that education and some countries are not always there and I think we need to value education and we also need to look but at... But it shouldn't be at the cost of family time as well. But what's family time? Does family time need to be overseas? Does no, it... no, but people could be going on holiday. I mean, we've just yeah. done the best seaside in, you know, <laughs> best beach town, Bambra, yeah. beautiful. We yeah. could go anywhere in the UK. But it's about what is the value we place on our education and what is the value we place on the outcomes for our children when, and their futures. My, my mother said to me, we want you to do well in the future so education is important. You're going to school every day. Can I I ask one last thing, Craig? It, does your... The way you do this, does it work? Do you have less people taking time out of school because of the way you're handling this without fines? I think fines, uh, they're, they're not effective. Based on the local authority I work in, there isn't the evidence to say they're effective, as you've just seen from Rachel, and she said it. Unless it gets to a certain amount, it won't impact. So do you have above-average attendance yes. for your yes, for region? Or... Uh, for my school, certainly. I couldn't tell you for the local authority, but for our school, certainly, um, we've got it. And I think it's about working with families and explaining why it's having an impact on their children.
Uh, really interesting talking to you this morning, mm. Craig. Thank you very much, Craig Burgess, head teacher at Woolston Community Primary School. Another week to go at school. Another week to go. Another week to go. <laughs> and uh, Rachel, thank you for sharing us uh, how you approach this. Uh, appreciate your time this morning as well. Thank you very much.